Hello, welcome back. Stag day again today. Um, in this video, I'm going to be fiddling around with the uh, back end, the rear subframe, the differential nose bearing on this car, which is howling, as you've seen in the previous video. I'm going to get that changed over because I'm fed up with it, and I want it out of the barn, and I want it fit for going home again so I can get on with Bob's chassis. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if you must. Comments down below. I do read every single one of them. If you want to get hold of me, Church House Classics, it's all one word, at gmail.com, um, and I will respond. Um, I can't always respond the second I receive the emails, but I do promise to respond. Um, there's quite a lot of stuff goes through. Um, if you want to buy me a pint or support the channel, there's a PayPal me link scrolling across the bottom of the screen here now, right now. Because I know some of you watch on the telly, and people have been asking me, I don't watch it on my computer. I can't read the descriptions. Anyway, enjoy the video. Right, so let's get on with this. I'm going to need to get the back end off the ground. I'm going to need to get the back wheels off the car. I'm going to need to get the exhaust off and then drop the differential um, and get the diff nose out once the differential's off. Quite a lot of work, huh? Right, so let's, uh, let's go into time-lapse mode and uh, I shall get the car prepped, ready to get this diff nose out and I'll show you what it is I'm doing. So there's uh, one of the output shafts, the other output shaft on the other side of the diff. Prop shafts off at the front. Exhaust came off nicely, no problems there at all. I've got a pair of mountings up at the top here, one there, one there. I need to undo those, lower the diff down after undoing these four bolts at the front here, and then the diff should come off the car. Once the diff's off, then I can start looking at the subframe. Right, so get this camera under here. There's the diff nose, differential's all out now. There's a fair amount of play in that bearing, I tell you. And even when I'm central on it, it didn't sound the best. So next, I need to undo, there's four big bolts here, three quarter I think they are. They all need to be undone. They're a bit of a pain to get to, I'll just get Mr. Windy under here and have the diff nose out. Um, and then here's the diff, just drained what oil there was in there out of it and I shall sift that through in a minute um, obviously I need to replace the seal and so forth this at the top here this is the wiggle pin the breather pin these often get caked in crab that one's not that's working nicely but as you can see there's a fair amount of oil around the outside of this thing it's not been off in I don't know how long so I might actually take the back cover off and uh, just have a look at it because I haven't got oil seals and things with me anyway so I need to get that all ordered and I can put this back together again next week. <sighs> Poor stag. Right, so this is it. This is the diff nose. It's out of the car. These pieces here have been welded on to stop it from fracturing. Um, I do with a lick of paint at some point, didn't it? Now, here you can very clearly see how much play we've got in that bearing. It's not very good. Um, and, and while it's centred on the input shaft of the differential, there shouldn't be that much play in there. So we'll start dismantling this thing. I need to take off the flange off the front. And now what I'm going to need to do that is I need to put a bolt or something in. There's a bolt there, that'll do nicely. Put a bolt in there. And then we want something to brace it with. Uh, Jemmy, and I want a windy gun. If I lean on that, that will do that. There he is, it's off. That's all you need. Make life a little bit easier, didn't it? And I could have done it with a brace, with a uh, breaker bar, but when you've got Mr. Windy and he's out already, you might as well use him, eh? Now this should come off. It does. Nice big nut underneath it. Just checking the splines in there, they look all right. The quill shaft should then come through. Now what I'll do is I'll put that on there and I'll give it a belt with the mallets, which I haven't got with me. 
So we've got the nap there, got the turns, tap, 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 tap. There's the quill shaft. That's how, that's the diff nose extension all back as one piece. All right, and then in here, now there's a little bit of oil in there, but not much. I've seen it before in the past. These things have been utterly washed out. Now, I don't know why this bearing has failed. Probably just mileage. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? Right, predictably I need to bugger off now and go and get my circuit players. All oh, right, okay, let's get the circuit out. Don't lose these circuits, by the way, they're, they're big and they are, that's quite a lot of oil on that, in fact, so it's possible then that the, yeah, see there's up and down movement and everything in that, that's not good. Now this bearing was a UK manufactured bearing, which I bought absolutely fucking thousands of years ago. Uh, is that going to go, let's look at the other side of it, a little bit bigger than that. That'll do. Put that on there. Put that in there. There it goes. It's out. Now I, I, I basically broke, these are sealed bearings, I broke the seal when I knocked that out. But I'm going to find out why it's failed. Because I went um, through a phase I'm swapping these fucking things out every two or three hundred miles because I was using uh, pattern parts and then more recently now there's plenty of grease left in there still so why has it failed? it's got in and out movement and because of that, it's got side to side movement as well, which I'm not demonstrating very well there, but I think it's just worn out. I think that is plain worn out. As you can see, it's just a normal uh, ball race in there. So one of the things I did want to check, by the way, because I've had so many problems and the only consistent thing in all my problems has been this unit. And I'm just wondering if it is entirely straight. I've also had, in this car, this car had a thump up the arse a fair while ago um, when my brother's mate smashed my brother's car into the back of my car because I stopped at a roundabout in France on the way home from Le Mans and he um, went out the, the, the back end of me and I'm wondering if I've got some damage on this as a result. It's fairly sturdy but, you know, you never can tell, can you? Don't know. I just don't know. Part number of this bearing. Part number is 134466. This one obviously came from the Rimmer Brothers. The bearings come out the same size. Now this was just give a little wipe over to find out if we've got any identifying marks on it. So I've got a number on here, on the one that's that's broken, because this lasted a lot longer than any others. PL, no, it's upside down, I think. No, AL, AL572RS. No other markings anywhere. I might have a quick gander at bearings online. Because that has fair gone, that. That has gone proper. Bit of investigation online and so forth and I think it's uh, rather than ALS I think it's actually RLS um, yes I think it's right RLS 72 RS so sorry about the ALS crap um, <laughs> the reason being is when I started searching for ALS 72 RS it came up like you know there was nothing available however 
when you search RLS7 to RS, um, there seems to be two different price brackets uh, when you're looking at the trade on these things. Uh, there seems to be one that's manufactured Far East, seems to be retailing trade-wise at about the £6 mark. This was a tenner. And the other one seems to be retailing around the £25 to £30 mark. Um, so, what do I do? Do I put the £10 bearing in? This is the broker one. Do I put the £10 bearing in and say, I see how long it lasts? Or have I had enough of taking this bloody diff nose off? And do I buy another £30 bearing and not worry about it for a decade? It was 2007 when I put that one in. And I only started grumbling earlier on this year. Maybe they are already supposed to last a decade, but when I was running the cheaper brand ones, they would last about 400 miles. Um, like I say, that one I bought from a bearing shop in Wickham. Um, I don't know what manufacturer it was. I could probably dig out the receipt for it. It'll be in my box of receipts at home. But it has only just... I mean, that that's terminal. It's just worn out, I think. Right, I think what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to work out that these things are true and straight um, before I go anywhere. Um, because, like I say, I'm a little bit concerned that perhaps, just perhaps, when these bits were welded onto here, these four bits here, and they just stopped the diff nose from breaking around this joint here, when they were welding on there, I'm just wondering if there was a little bit of heat distortion. Diffy diff face, right. I've put the busted bearing back into the diff nose, and I've put the diff nose back onto the diff, because I wanted to just check whether the shaft and this nose were actually straight and square. <clears throat> so the best way of finding this out, I mean, I've not bolted this down, uh, but it does look pretty square on there. Perhaps I'll have to bolt it down. But the idea is dial gauge on the top up here. Big lump of crap on the lens. Dial gauge on the top up here. Can we see him? We might be able to see him if I raise the tripod up a little bit. <laughs> tripod, eh? Luxury. Who'd have thought this a little while ago? Right, there we are, dial gauge. And then all I'm doing is I'm rotating the diff. Now I've got the dial gauge. It's difficult to get onto the bearing face down here because of the splines. So I'm working right on the tip of the threaded edge. There's, there's like a, a, a shank around the top there. So this is a millimetre dial gauge. I've got about ten thousandths. I've run out there, so that's from there to there. Oh, about 12, 12, 12 thousandths have run out. So I think the shaft and the nose extension, I think they're fairly straight. I don't really have too much of an issue with that. Um, I might just bolt it down, a couple of bolts, just to make sure that this is as tight as I can get it. I mean, I can't move it. It's always worth just um, making sure. So that would indicate that the thing is straight and it's not shaking itself apart because of a vibration. I'm not picking a vibration up in the drivetrain anyway. I have ordered one of the um, more expensive bearings, the 30 something pound bearings, rather than the £4.50 bearing. I'm happy enough with that. Right, let me bolt. I'm going to just put a couple of bolts on this thing and then I'll just double check again. Then we're going to pull the diff back cover off and see what's going on inside. Oh, yes. Um, I might replace all of the seals. I mean, it doesn't actually appear to be that much backlash in this thing. I think it's actually pretty healthy. I mean, I'm barely moving the output shaft. So if I... I can look at the backlash, but basically you've got the two output shafts. Hold one rigid and rock the other and I can see there's no real backlash in that. There's a knock in there somewhere but it's transferring straight through to the input shaft. I'll get the back cover off and have a look at it but first of all let's pop a bolt in. <laughs> That was an unwelcome gift. <laughs> right, okay. So I'm, I'm measuring now. Uh, what have we got here? That's. I've got a tight spot in this diff, you know. I'm going to go. Oh, the back cover's definitely coming off this thing. Um, but yeah, it's about 12, 
12, 13 thou, I think, or thereabouts. I don't think there's any real particular run out in this thing. I'm happy enough with it. Uh, right, let's get this diff nose off again. Okie dokie, right, these are parts, um, we've got the cover off, a uh, few interesting observations, first of all, no trace of any gasket, but quite a lot of um, bathroom sealant, thanks for that chaps, um, whoever did this, the other thing that kind of concerned me is I was taking this cover off, um, there were a couple of uh, bolt fixings that were 9 sixteenths head rather than a half inch head, and as I was removing them, they did that, now, that's not even snapped. That's been engineered to fill a hole. I've looked at the thread holes that it came from and they all appear to be absolutely perfectly fine. So that was one of them. Bolt goes in and that was one of them. Bolt goes in. I think whoever had this thing apart last time, not me, and this diff's been on my car since I put the manual gearbox in, in 2006, I picked it up as a spare uh, from a chap in Hayes, I think. Anyway, um, I didn't do anything with it. I just put it on the car and it, it, it ran and it doesn't whine, which is good news, but no gaskets. Um, and uh, right. Anyway, um, that aside, um, looking inside the dip here. So if we turn him around a little bit, you can see the, the sun and planet gears. You can see the, the, the crown wheel, the pinions right at the back there. Now, really, what I want to do here is look at the sun and planet gears. These, these fellas here. Because I'm really looking for any sort of forms of unusual wear. Now, it's a bit difficult to see at the moment because we've got quite a lot of gank in there. So what I might do is just get some WD-40 and just give it a quick rinse down. It just cleans all the crap off. And really, it's just, it's all going to disappear inside. And I'll make sure this thing's properly cleaned out inside once it's done. There's a little bit of water got in here when I was... um fiddling around. Now, those gears look shiny and they look warm, but they're not past it. I mean, true, looking in the diff now, looking at removing the uh, kind of backlash, which involves putting a shim behind the planet gear on the cross shaft. So what I'm doing basically to work out what I need to do, because I can see there's a shim in there, but I need a thicker shim. Now I can just completely guess at this, or I can use my feeler gauges, lift the planet gear up gently and see what feeler gauges I can get in there. So I can get a, what gear is that? That's about nine thousandths. Let me just leave that there for a second. Whoops. Right, well that's taken the majority of it out. Um, we need a certain amount of backlash in it, so that's nine thousandths of an inch. Um, let's see what happens with, can we get a ten or an eleven in there? Let's go for an eleven thousandths of an inch, there he is. And again, if we just lift up the gear, can I get eleven thousandths in there? Could actually have myself a better screwdriver, eh, couldn't I? Well, let's just take this bearing cap off him. And uh, I don't know what is the worst that can possibly happen.
So that was more than 38 bloody foot pounds. Bearing cap number one. What I'll do, uh, the bolts are there. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to mark it with the red pen of writing on turds. Oily um, rag. Because what I want to do is just mark order two. All right, so we know which way round it's going. All right. That's only if I take off both bearing caps here. Fuck you. This might work, this might not. If it don't work, I don't know what we've lost really. Because I haven't got the parts to finish it today anyway. Which is why I was fiddling around with it. Another bolt. Now, is that going to... Oh, that comes straight off. Look at that. One bearing cap. And there's the bearing underneath. That's good news. So that can go over there now. And then I get the drawing back again. Now, hopefully, now, I should be able to drift this out now because I haven't got anything in the way. See the roll pins. I don't know if it's a roll pin, it's a uh, what's his name pin, isn't it? Because it's not a roll pin because it hasn't got a hole through the middle of it. But it starts to move for cross shaft anyway. This pin might need to go a bit further. Bear in mind, it's the first time I've ever done one of these. way does this cross shaft need to go are we sure that there is no pin in this end let's get torch him at the torch face there he is actually I've got a bit of torch over here I would say there's no pin in that end at all so it looks like only one end of the cross shaft has got a pin in it. Um, now, in theory, that cross shaft should now go in, I'm guessing. It does, look at that. It's not going very far because otherwise it's going to end up getting locked. But what I want to do is be able to push it in far enough that I can get one of these gears out. Can we do that with this thing in, in the cage? I wonder. Or are we just going to completely fuck it up? Right, now, that is the cross shaft down a fair way. There's the hole that the pin goes through. Uh, Mr. Torch again. Because I can't rotate the whole thing right round now because it's going to hit the pinion. I can see the shim in there. Let's see if we can get the shim, persuade the shim to come in an outward direction. <clears throat> Might need a little bit of there it goes. Now let's go back there. I can see the shim now. And there he is. Thrust washer. Right, okay, so that's the thrust washer. What I think I have to do here is I have to measure existing thrust washer. Which will be a measure two or three times. I can get that in thousandths of an inch. So that's 50, 60, 64 thou bonus of things. Measure the other one. Add them together. Add nine thou. 
divide by two and then get a pair of new ones of these. Uh, manual um, actually says zero backlash in the sun to planet gears, which I'm a little bit surprised by actually. I would have thought there'd be some end float in there, but apparently not. Um, so I will, I'll have to get the other thrust washer out of kit. <laughs> Tit. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that's easy enough though, because I can, that's one end. So let, 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 let's measure it and then I can put this one back in actually, because I'm not going to get the parts instantly. So first of all, we'll check that the uh, micrometer is zeroed. See, that works. If I just go for the click, that's fine. Right, so let's measure this shim now. Right, so I have got two graduations, that's 50 thou uh, plus 14 thou. So that's 64 thou on this one. Make a mental note of. Oh dear. So 64 thou. We need to add 9,000 to it. So we've got zero. Oh, for fuck's sake, 0 0.064, 0 0.009. Let's pop this one back in. I'll just double check this one. I'll measure it a couple of times. Measure twice, cut once. Oh, come on, Richard. Fanny. Right, that's coming up exactly the same thing there. So 64. Nearer 65, actually. That's 63. 64. Just going around it. I mean, obviously, this thing's worn at various different places. 64. Right, okay, 64,000. So we'll pop this one back in. Uh, it needs to go at this end here. So let's do that. Just pop the shaft down. He's there. And push this back. Oh, it's not going down far enough. Right. Come on, you bastard. See, right, push the thrust washer back up. No, he's still not down far enough. Push the thrust washer back up there and hold with finger. Push pin back up. Might need a bit of leverage on this. There it goes. It's up there, shim is in. Now I tap it right the way through now. Take the other shim out. Which I should be able to do any second. Oh, pins drop right fucking down. I don't want to lose the sun gear as well, you see. Sorry, planet gear. There's that washer. Just give me a quick wipe off. This one feels shiny. Measure this one. This one's actually quite a lot more worn, I think, than the other one. So let's measure. Right, 50, 2, 52, 51, 57. 57, 52, so obviously this one's the one that's worn isn't it, 52, oh now 52, I wonder if it's just got some, let's give it a proper good clean, there's probably some gank on it somewhere, um, clean it off on overalls, a bit of clean paper perhaps. Da 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 da. 
da, da. Right, let's try it again. So we are in and clamped up 52. 52. 52. 52. Almost all the way around. 52. 52. 52. So I'm going to say that's 52. Times. Add that lot together. 13, 15, 12. So 125, 125 thou, divide that by two, 62 and a half, isn't it? So I'm looking for 62, a pair of 62 thou shims. Now, let me just look at the catalog here because I have got some that are. Oh, that's good. They don't do one that's 62 and a half. So I can do 63, 63 to 65. Thou. Part number 139954. Uh, I'll just double check my calculations and I think I'm going to order those. I think that then will be this diff back ready for f future use. Uh, pins back in. Now, which end had the dot in it? <laughs> which, which end had the fucking hole? Oh, Richard, what are you doing? Not that end. Let's just check. Cross pin down. That end's got the hole. That's good. So we're going to need to straighten this out because at the moment the pins shifted very, very slightly. That's in line now. I'll leave the pin like that for the time being. Let me just again clean off. I'm going to put a dot on there. Fuck you. Because that's got the pin on it, all right? And I think we are going to tidy this lot away now because I'm going to need to order some parts up. <laughs> 